OPC UA is the latest open standard client interface that provides a way to connect clients and servers in a very secure manner without relying on Microsoft DCOM like its predecessor, OPC DA. TopServer supports the latest OPC UA security policies for connecting your HMI, SCADA, MES, Historian, and other UA client applications to your PLCs, RTUs, and other industrial process control devices. In this video, I will step you through the basics of configuring the OPC UA server interface in TopServer and then making an OPC UA connection from a UA test client, including a coverage of exchanging security certificates, setting up user authentication, and more. So first, we'll start in the top server configuration interface that you see here on my desktop. We need to go right-click on pro pro Project in the Tree view here, and I'm going to select Properties, and then we're going to go to the OPC UA section. Since the focus of this video is to get a basic connection from an OPC UA client to top server going as quickly as possible, we won't cover every setting in this section. If you have specific questions about any of the settings that I don't cover, I would encourage you to click the help button and reference the help file for full details on each of these settings. So the main item that we want to do here is confirm that the enable setting that you see here is currently set to yes. Since this is actually the default, unless you've gone in and set this to no at some point, you should be good here. So we're going to keep that to the default of yes. And the only other setting that we really need to make sure of here uh, is the allow anonymous login setting. Um, and that, that by default is set to no. So uh, the fact that that's set to no means that only an OPC UA client application that specifies a username and password that have been defined in your top server user manager will ever be able to allow to connect to the top server UA interface. This is by design since top server is secure out of the box. Uh, if you happen to be in a secure corporate network that is firewalled and not connected to the internet and you so choose to, you can tell top server to allow UA clients to connect without user login credentials by setting this particular setting to yes instead of no. For our purposes though, we'll keep this set to no and I'll show you how to de define a user and password in the user manager that we'll use when we connect our OPC UA test client momentarily. Since we haven't changed any of the defaults here, we can click Cancel or OK to exit the project properties. So I'm going to click Cancel. Our next step is to go to the Top Server User Manager. So I'm going to go to Windows System Tray, find my Top Server Admin icon, which you can see here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select Settings. And then we're going to go to the User Manager section. Uh, we can add a user to either the administrators group that you see here or the server users group depending on whether you want the user to have admin privileges in top server or not. Do be aware though if you do choose to use a server user you will then have to enable some permissions for IO tag and browsing access since those aren't enabled by default. Uh, so it is recommended to use an admin user for UA connections wherever possible for those reasons. So I'm going to add an administrator user here so if I right click on that group and select add user, I'm going to define my username, okay, Rutherford, and I'm going to I'm going to enter an optional description here. We'll just call this Kevin's admin user. And then I'm going to define my password. So do notice uh, there is a description uh, of some of the requirements for passwords in the top server user manager. They must be no less than 14 characters long and should include a mix of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my password that meets that criteria. And then I'm going to enter it again to confirm. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. apply that. You'll see that since it did apply that, that means my password entries matched up. Uh, so now that I've defined my user, I can go ahead and click apply. And we can close out of the admin properties. And I'm going to go ahead and click close for that. The next step is opening the OPC UA configura configuration manager, which is also done using the admin icon for top server. So I'm going to right click again, go to OPC UA configuration. Now, for this video, we're specifically interested in server endpoints, trusted clients, and the instance certificates section. Uh, so those are the ones we're going to focus on. Let's start with server endpoints. 
Now, an OPC UA server endpoint is the specific URL that an OPC UA client must specify to connect to a specific OPC UA server, like Top Server. Now, if you're familiar with OPC DA, just think of this in a similar fashion to an OPC DA server prog ID. Uh, UA server endpoint always starts with the URL prefix of opc.tcp colon forward slash forward slash, and it ends with a colon and a specific TCP port that's defined in the OPC UA server endpoint. Top server installs by default with two endpoints. There's one that you can see here for local only connections that uses the loopback address of 127.0.0.1. Now only UA clients that are installed on the same machine as top server can successfully connect using that local only endpoint. And you'll see the other endpoint that's configured um, is a remote endpoint that's composed of the prefix that I mentioned and the DNS computer name or IP address of the machine where top server is installed followed by the TCP port. We can connect to this endpoint with local or remote OPC UA clients. Now if you'll notice it's in italics and the reason for that if you look down here is it's not enabled. So by default out of the box it's another security feature the remote endpoint is disabled so you would never be able to connect to top server via UA from a remote machine out of the box. It's secure by default. So we're going to connect to that endpoint, so I do want to go ahead and enable that. You'll see the italics go away once that's enabled. Now if we go ahead and open this remote endpoint by double clicking, uh, you can see that it's possible to define a specific network adapter from the drop down uh, of, of the available list of network adapters on the machine where top server is installed. Though it is best to leave it at the default option uh, so that Windows can manage the correct network adapter to use for the connection. Um, you'll see here is also where we define that TCP port that is used in the endpoint URL. Uh, for top server, it defaults to 49380, which we're going to go ahead and keep at that default and use for this demo. Uh, underneath that, you can see the fully qualified endpoint URL that we'll use in the UA client. And another cool feature here is you can actually highlight that full endpoint URL. And then if you right click, you can do a copy operation. And that will allow us to easily paste that into the UA client later to avoid any sort of uh, fat fingering or user errors on our part and make sure that's accurate. And last but not least in the endpoint, this is also where you define the security policies for what security will be accepted from any UA clients connecting to this particular endpoint. Uh, you have full control over which policies will or will not be supported for each endpoint. This allows you to have different endpoints defined for different purposes. Perhaps you might want one endpoint that is fully secured and another that is for internal network use only that uses no encryption or authentication. By default, you can see that the less secure options are disabled by default, making the top server UA interface as secure as possible out of the box, which is a recurring theme as you can see. This means that a UA client using none or a lower level of encryption will not be allowed to connect to top server. We just need to make sure and note uh, that, the, that our endpoint is configured to only, only accept basic 256 SHA-256. And uh, that's what we'll need to configure our UA client connection to use later when we're working on that configuration. Uh, since we're keeping the defaults, we can just go ahead and click OK or Cancel to exit. So I'm going to click Cancel. And for now, we've actually configured everything we need to in Top Server to get started. Uh, I'll revisit the Trusted Clients and Instant Certificates sections after we start our connection in the UA Test Client. So. I'm going to keep that open. First, as you'll notice, the bottom here, server runtime reinitialization is required to utilize any changes. We did make a change of enabling this particular endpoint, so we do need to go ahead and reinitialize our top server by right clicking on the admin icon and going to reinitialize. And now that we've reinitialized our top server, um, we're going to go over to our test client, which for this, for this particular test, we're using the UA Expert test client, which is available from Unified Automation. Now, do note, uh, if, this, if it's your first time launching the UA Expert, you will be prompted to create a new security instance certificate for the UA Expert. Now, I've already done this, so this step isn't necessary for this exercise. So the first thing I want to do is add a connection to Top Server. So I'm going to right-click on the Servers folder under Project, and I'm going to click Add. Now, 
since we don't have a discovery service available, um, a discovery service, if you're not familiar, is a particular OPC UA concept uh, of a service that can be installed, uh, which OPC UA servers can register with. Uh, and then OPC UA clients can connect to that discovery service and browse for available UA servers that have registered with that service. Uh, Top Server doesn't install with a discovery service, um, so we're going to go to the Advanced tab. And uh, we're going to specify our settings here. I'm going to call my configuration name Top Server UA. And then I'll enter the endpoint URL. Uh, and that again, that needs to match what we saw on the server endpoint and top server. Now, since I copied it earlier, I can simply paste here to ensure accuracy, like I mentioned. So you'll see that pasted right in. Uh, next, we need to select the security policy and mode. So as I mentioned earlier, we need to make sure that matches our endpoint. So we're going to select basic 256, SHA-256, uh, and a message security mode of sign and encrypt to match our endpoint. And last but not least, we need to define the authentication. Remember that we told Top Server earlier, uh, we, we kept the default of telling Top Server not to accept anonymous logons. Uh, so the default here wouldn't work. Uh, we need to select username and password. And I'm going to enter my username, enable store, and then I'm going to enter my password that I defined when I created my user. And then I'm going to click OK to apply. Notice that Connect automatically is enabled. So as soon as I click OK, a UA expert is going to attempt to make a connection to Top Server. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, because UA expert doesn't yet have the security certificate from Top Server, we're prompted here as to whether or not we want to trust it or not. Uh, now, we do want to trust it. You can see it tells us um, the name. Um, and it gives us all the information um, from our certificate uh, that was self-issued in Top Server that, that's self-issued by default when Top Server installs. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click the Trust Cer Server Certificate button to trust that. And you'll see that change the status to Trusted and Good. Uh, so now we can go ahead and proceed and click Continue. Now notice, though, the, the open plug icon up here is telling us uh, that we're still not connected. Now that's because Top Server still doesn't trust the UA certificate that the UA expert used to just try to connect. Uh, so now we need to jump back over to our Top Server OPC UA Configuration Manager. So I'm going to bring that back up. We're going to go to the Trusted Clients section. Uh, so you can see an entry for UA expert in the list uh, with a red X marked on it telling us that, that that certificate's currently not trusted. We simply need to highlight that entry, and then we're going to click the Trust button, and you'll see that we've now established a trust relationship. So now both the client and the server trust each other, and we'll be able to connect. Now, before I jump back over and complete our connection, though, I do want to take this opportunity to point out the Instance Certificate section and how it's useful here. So if I go over there, uh, for this example, uh, you'll notice there's a client driver section down here. For this example, we're only interested in the server section of attributes, uh, while Top Server also has a driver that allows it to connect as an OPC UA client to other OPC UA servers. That is beyond the scope of this video. So here you'll notice we can, we can view Top Server's server certificate. We can export that certificate. We can reissue that certificate, uh, or we can import import a certificate. Um, and that, that security certificate is what is used by Top Server when an OPC UA client wants to connect. Uh, import is useful if you decide to source a certificate from a third-party certificate authority like VeriSign. Uh, by default, Top Server will use a self-issued certificate that is issued using OpenSSL. And the OpenSSL components used to issue those certificates is maintained at the most current and secure level available. Uh, this section allows you to export the certificate as I mentioned, uh, which allows you to then take that certificate and manually import it into your OPC UA clients. Um, and if you perform the same action with your UA clients and export their certificates, and I'll show you how to do that in the UA export, you can also import those manually over here in the Trusted Clients section using the Import button you see here at the bottom. And that, and that will avoid those steps that we just completed um, 
establishing trust after an initial failed connection. So if you don't want to see that connection fail the way we did and then go through um, the steps that we took of, of trusting the certificate, um, you can do that manual uh, swap of certificates the way I just mentioned. Um, so just using that import button at the bottom. However, uh, now that we've established our trust relationship between UA Expert and Top Server, we can actually go ahead and jump back over to the UA Expert and complete our connection. So I'm going to bring my UA Expert back up. Now, before, before I go ahead and establish a connection, just for your reference, as I mentioned, uh, you could export the UA Expert Security Certificate. Now, you do that by going to Settings, Manage Certificates. Uh, and you'll see uh, UA Expert's own certificate. You can also see the trusted top server instance certificate. Um, but to export UA Expert's certificate, which you would then be able to go back to the trusted client section and import manually if you ever needed to do so, you just highlight that certificate, and you go to the Copy Application Certificate 2, and that allows you to specify a location, and you can specify a file name and save that certificate off as a .der file, uh, which you could then import into your UA server, um, specifically in this case, top server. Um, so we're going to cancel there and click OK. Uh, that's just for your reference to know how to make that happen. So now we're going to go ahead and establish our UA connection to top server which is really straightforward at this point, now that we've established that trust relationship. Uh, so if I go back to my top server UA configuration that I, that I configured just momentarily ago, I'm going to right click and select connect. And you'll notice the icon now shows two connected plugs, meaning that we're successfully connected to our top server UA interface. Now we can browse the top server address space and select some read items for my test topic to confirm that we're securely connected and receiving data from top server. So I just need to expand the folder under objects for the channel that I'm interested in and then find the device under that channel that I'm interested in to find some tags that are defined. Now I'm running the simulation sim demo project in my top server uh, so I'm going to go to simulation examples as my and expand that channel and I'm going to go to the functions device and then I'm just going to drag and drop a few of the tags on the device over to data access view. So I'm going to grab a ramp, I'm going to do a random, I'm going to grab a sign, and I'm going to grab a user variable. Now with my items added to the data access view, you can see uh, successfully changing values and changing timestamps with those values, along with a good status for each of those. So, as you can see, setting up connections to top server via OPC UA is straightforward and secure, and all without having to configure any DCOM settings. As more and more client vendors continue to offer OPC UA for connecting to OPC servers, you can take advantage of the benefits and security of OPC UA for your device connectivity requirements using top server. You can find a full guide on setting up OPC UA in our FAQs and get a free trial of top server on our website. As always, if you have questions beyond what either this video or the detailed guide answer, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team using the information provided here.